Now you're ready to write your first computer program. So if you haven't already, open Scratch by double clicking on the desktop icon labeled Scratch GPIO 5. We'll wait until a little later to explain what exactly GPIO stands for. After double clicking, wait patiently for the program to load, which might take a few seconds. Eventually, there will be a pop up box with an OK button. Click on that button, and you can now access the program. In case you haven't seen it before, we'll give you a brief overview of the Scratch interface, but don't worry, you don't need to remember all of this right now. We'll re explain everything as you need to use different parts for each step of your project. On the left are a series of menus that allow you to access different blocks of code that you'll use to write your Scratch programs. The blocks are color coded, and clicking on each button towards the top brings up a menu with many different individual blocks of code that you can use in a program. To write a program, you will drag these blocks out into the Scripts tab or the main blank area in the middle of the screen. On the right side of the screen is the Stage, which is a blank area with interactive characters that you can control and move around, for example by making your own video game. You'll do this in one of your later projects. Finally, on the top edge of the screen, you have menus like a file menu that allows you to save, open, and create new projects. Now the first thing you'll need to do in this project is access the control menu, which you can do by clicking on the control button in the upper left. This brings up a bunch of blocks of code that control when things happen in your program. There's a little scroll bar on the right you can use to scroll down and see more of the blocks, but you're only going to need one of them to start. If you remember from the demo video for this project, you want something to happen when you press a certain key on your keyboard. You can accomplish that using the when key pressed block of code. Click on this block of code, hold your mouse button down, and drag it out to the main work area, then release your mouse button to add it to your program. If you want to learn more about a specific block, or are curious about a block not mentioned in the Science Buddies directions, you can right click on it and select Help. This will bring up a pop-up window with more information about the block from the Scratch Help program. Now by default, this block uses the space key, but if you click on the little drop-down arrow next to the word space, it lets you select from any of the other keys on your keyboard. You can use whichever keys you want, but I'm going to use the arrow keys as an example, so I'm going to pick the right arrow key. This will tell the program to do something when the right arrow key is pressed. Now you need to tell the program what you want it to do when you press the right arrow key. So go up to the sound button, click on that, and that brings up a bunch of different blocks of code that control Scratch playing sounds. The very first one just tells it to play a simple sound file that's already saved in Scratch. So click on that and drag it out to your program. You'll notice that you can put the block anywhere in your program, but you need it to be attached to the block that says one right arrow key pressed, so it only plays this sound when you press the right arrow key. If you look closely at the blocks, you'll see they have little tabs that kind of look like puzzle pieces that snap together. So if you drag this block up to just under the when arrow key pressed block, it should automatically snap into place, and now the two blocks are linked together. Now you probably want to have more than one key and one sound effect on your piano, but instead of writing the same block of code over and over again, you can copy these two blocks you've already written. You can easily do that by right-clicking on the first block, selecting Duplicate, and then clicking to place the new set of blocks. There's also a delete button in case you make a mistake and want to delete a section of code. Once you've made the copy, you can use the drop-down menu next to the arrow key's name to select a different key to correspond to a different sound. You can do the same thing for the sound block of code, but you'll notice a problem. Meow is the only available sound, and you probably don't want a piano that just plays cat noises. To access more sounds, you'll need to click on the Sounds tab towards the top of the screen. Click on that tab, and then click on the Import button, which will bring up a pop-up window loaded with folders of different pre-recorded sounds that come with Scratch. I'm going to use animal sounds as an example, but you can use any sounds that you find interesting. So I'm going to double-click on the Animals folder, and then just click on a dog noise and click OK to load it into my program. This makes the dog sound effect show up in the list of sound effects that are loaded into the program, and if I go back to the Scripts tab where my program is written, it is now available as an option in the drop-down menu for the Play Sound block. So now I want to add even more keys to my keyboard by duplicating my existing blocks of code. Remember that you can do that by right-clicking on a block and selecting Duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here, and oops, you see that I accidentally clicked on Delete instead of Duplicate. So I'm not going to panic. I'm going to go back and right-click on my first block, select Duplicate again, 
and then select different arrow keys in the dog sound effect. So this is probably a very good time to mention that you can and should save your work by clicking on the file menu and then selecting either save or save as to give the file a new name. This brings up a window where you can name your file and also create new folders to save your work. For example, you see I've created a folder here called Science Buddies, but I'm just going to call this file My Piano and save it in the Scratch Projects directory. Now, if you ever do make a big mistake and want to reload your program, you can just go up to File Open, select the file you saved, and click OK to load it again, but I'm just going to cancel out of that for now. So to finish up my program, I'm going to duplicate my blocks of code to add controls to the other two arrow keys to make them play sounds. So remember, right-click to select Duplicate, and then click on the drop-down menus to select other keys. I'm using the arrow keys as an example, but you don't have to use those. You can use any keys you want. And then I'm going to go to the Sounds tab to import two new sounds. So click on the Sounds tab, click on the Import button, and I'm going to select a couple different animal noises, but remember, you don't have to use the animal noises. You can use whatever sounds you like best. So click on the import button, select your sound, then click on OK to load the sound. And when you go back to the scripts tab, those sounds will now be available in the drop down menu for the play sound block. And now I have exactly what you saw in the demo video, four different arrow keys on the keyboard that control four different sound effects. Next you'll learn how to also use the keys to control LEDs on your breadboard.